anything. I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, home the Bel Air. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odi J, and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode six of Bel Air. As we mentioned, they dropped three this week, three last week, and it looks like it's going to be two and two to finish off the season. Now, in episode six, everything is starting to head in the right direction. Black says is picking up. We just sold all of our inventory and people are requesting more and more. We know that Jeffrey and Frederick, they're on a better page because Penelope is back. We're going into the future with that to see what the heck Jeffrey's actually going to do. And Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, well, it looks like the relationship is looking a little bit better and we can bank on that. All pun intended. Now, before we jump into this and break this down, if you like Bel Air content, recaps like this, breakdowns, after show discussions, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need about 400. So I appreciate each and every one of you. But let's jump into it. This is the recap for episode six of Bel Air. In episode five, we did see Will texting his mom. Hey, I need you out here in L.A. because he's been thinking about some things. He goes and picks her up from the airport at the beginning of the episode. He's driving me out of my mind. That's why it's hard for me to find. Can't get her out of my head. Kiss her, miss her, love her. That girl is poison. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We all know that song. Him and his mom are rocking out, headed back to the crib. Welcome to L.A., mom. The only issue is outside of the bank's house, well, ever since Uncle Phil has been announced as the lawyer, the attorney for Omar and his construction company, people are outside protesting. They still don't want gentrification out here. They're like, we don't care that you're talking about putting money in our pockets. We don't care that you're trying to upgrade our community and have stuff being black owned. We don't care about none of that. We're just protesting because we want to protest. And Aunt Viv is like, do we need Jeffrey to handle this? And Uncle Phil's like, no. And we're all like, no. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's handling of a situation is a little bit different than the legal way, per se. Now, Carlton is on FaceTime with Amira. Remember, Spencer says sometimes we have a lot on our plate. Sometimes people may be a little bit too much. Also, on Viv, they kind of told Amira to step away from Carlton because going through recovery and rehab, a relationship might not be the best thing. But Carlton really likes her and she likes him. And we know what they were doing on the highway. So he's like, no, 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 no. I really do like you. I enjoy your company and you're not too much for me. So I want to work through whatever we have. And then they get to talking a little bit freaky on the phone. You go back and watch the episode if you want that kind of information. Well, Black Sess is up and running. We got the cousins working together. And guess who our number one models are? You better strut that. You better work that, girl. It's Aunt Viv and Aunt Vi. Because, you know, both of my aunties, they coming out in the Black Sess tank top, the Black Sess baseball shirts, the Black Sess bucket hats. They over here, they got social media going crazy. 500 people on the line. We got sold out merchandise. This is what we're talking about. Black entrepreneurship, putting money back in our people's pockets with 50 percent of the proceeds going to black owned businesses like your business and Calvin's Vinyls. Uncle Phil is having a business meeting and while he's sitting down talking to his colleagues. Guess who shows up? Erica shows up. And well, Uncle Phil wrote that letter to her saying effective immediately. Philip Banks and Associates won't be working with Erica. Now, she's sitting down and she's saying, you need to really rethink this. And the reason he's separating himself is because he wants to go on with his marriage, with his wife, and get away from the distraction. But Erica lays it all out and says, listen, if you terminate our working relationship, all of your clients, they're coming back to me. And you'll have nothing but Omar. And putting all your eggs in one basket or just having one client, you won't be able to stay afloat. So Uncle Phil said, this is how you're playing. But he sticks to the code and he tells Erica he's done. Carlton and Amira show up to one of Spencer's meetings because Spencer, he's been helping out Carlton. But when they get there, Amira, she goes off on Spencer. Am I too much for Carlton? No one seems to like me. And Carlton like, whoa, 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 wait, calm down. Why would you go off on Spencer? He's the only person that's actually been helping me. 
Now, Spencer does call out a mirror and he says, I know who you are because you've been here. And he wasn't saying it in a deceitful way or anything. He was just saying, I've known what you went through and that's why I'm trying to help. I'm helping the both of you. But now she's saying, I need someone in my corner, Carlton. And he's saying, I, I am. But she also mentions, I'm Viv and Phil don't like her. So what does Carlton do? He lies and says, no, they love you. And we want you to go to dinner at our house in two days. Will and Vive, they've been vibing out. Now they go upstairs and they're just having a little sit down. And he starts talking about what he wants to do and how Black Sess is taking off. But he also wants to have a sit down with her, Lou, so they can all be in the room for the first time since he was four years old. Because he has that picture that Lou gave him. Now Vi, she doesn't want to sit down in this room with him. She's pretty much wiped her hands clean with Lou because she's also upset that one, he's been in L.A. Two, he didn't get in contact with Will. But this is something that's been on Will's shoulder since he talked to his boy, the manager, at the country club. Sometimes you need someone that looks like you around your age to give you information or give you a little bit of guidance. Jeffrey goes back to tell Phil what's going on. Penelope. She's back over here. He's finally seen her. Frederick's here. But there's a big issue. The family is compromised. And as they said together, there's only one person that can fix this situation. And even Uncle Phil knew you're talking about Roman. He's like, yeah. He's like, well, wait. Jeffrey said it's too late. I already contacted. So Phil's like, oh, well, at least you already got some answers. But good luck with that. Because he knows whatever Jeffrey didn't got into over in the U.K., He's been good here while he's laying low, but now his family's on the line and a man got to do what a man got to do. Hillary shows up to the house to talk to Aunt Vi, but she also goes up to talk to Ashley because there is a young man by the name of Eli, who's non-binary, that was called in the room. Now they're joking around about this and then she starts to hear some of Ashley's new lyrics. She's reading them. She's like, dang, you're talking a little bit bad about me. At least you didn't call me a B. And Ashley jokes and like, well, I ain't done with the lyrics. But Hillary's trying to convince everyone that she's deeply in love with LaMarcus, even though she was caught kissing young jazz. Now, she tells Ashley, listen, I really love LaMarcus, but I want you to be my maid of honor. And Ashley's like, man, that, that's, that's an honor. It really is an honor. So that's good to see these sisters back together. But knowing Ashley, she ain't going to let that jazz kiss slide. Uncle Phil shows up to Calvin's vinyl. Jazz is like, oh, what's up, Uncle Phil? They get to talking about records. Man, that's a crazy one right there. That joint crazy, crazy, for real. What you know about this young blood? But then Uncle Phil gets to talking about business. He starts asking about the taxes. Now, Jazz doesn't say he got the money for the taxes, even though we know Jazz just won $35,000. We don't know where the money is. Because Uncle Phil asked him, do you have the taxes to pay for this place? He's like, nah, I'm still hustling, but I can't sleep at night. So Uncle Phil, being a, the attorney for Omar, he has a proposition. He has a deal. Hey, listen, if you sell Calvin's vinyls as a friend, this would be more money than you would make off of this, and you'll be able to sleep at night. But Jazz doesn't want to sell Calvin's vinyl because this is a staple of the community. Now, Carlton has... His mom about the dinner with Amira. Will's about to have to sit down with Lou and his mom. And both of them are at a point where they wanted to work. It's a lot of stuff on the plate. But when you put the food on the plate, you got to eat it. Don't ever put anything on your plate that you're not going to eat. So Will, he doesn't know how this is going to turn out between his mom and his dad. Carlton doesn't know how it's going to turn out between Amira and his parents. So it's like both of us. We want each party to like each other. And we're the middle person. We're the glue. But the only thing is, when you use glue, if you don't let it dry, then things don't stick. Make that make sense. Well, the dinner smells good in here. Everyone looking good, dressed good, smelling good also. Well, they're sitting here and they're waiting for a mirror. Time's ticking, ticking. Time's ticking, ticking. No one's eating. Food's getting cold. Did I mention time is ticking, ticking? I'm Viv is saying, is she always this late? Carl's like, oh, no, 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 that's not like her. 
But eventually, after that time kept on ticking, slipping into the future, Carlton said, well, let's just eat. Let's not let the food get cold. Jeffrey, Penelope, they sit down, and Roman shows up. And guess who Roman is? The OG Jeffrey. Now, he's like, man, you pissed off some people over there in the UK. You took out the head of their operation. The organization's been in shambles since you left. The only way you can get back and pay off this debt is you come over here and work. They know how you get down, so you need to come over here. And if not, that means Frederick's life is on the line. And Jeffrey, he's like, wait a minute. You owe me. I don't need to go over there and help them out. I don't have anything to do with that. But now, the consequences of Jeffrey not going to the UK is Frederick. And this whole time, people have been pointing fingers at Frederick like he was a bad guy, like he was setting up Jeffrey. The whole time, he's just an innocent kid caught up in his father's nonsense. But Jeffrey ain't standing for it. Will gets his mom and dad to sit down. Vi, she's getting ready to hop up. She don't want to hear none of this. But it gets deep. Because the story that we were told isn't the story that actually happened. And if we jump straight into the story, we find out that while they were in these Philly streets, Lou's story is just like Will's. Father unalive, lost his mother, had to live with his grandparents, different lifestyle. They tried to show him a better way. He dropped out of school, gave up basketball. Him and Vi ended up getting together and they had a kid. And the reason this hurts so much is because he said it's like looking at the mirror when he's looking at Will because Will is going down the same path. But we got to get deeper into the story. Well, it turns out The story about Lou just upping and leaving because he robbed somebody, that wasn't it. They were in Philly without power, without the heat for five days. Very, very cold. And one day, Vi said, we're not staying in this ice pot. You need to get up and get out and do something. And Lou said at that moment, he heard a voice. And it said, nigga, do something. Now, she said, go and get the money that you owe because he was moving refrigerators for a gentleman that never paid him. When he went over there, the pressure from coming back home, the house being cold, the money that he wasn't paid, he said it went fast. He ended up robbing the guy, and that's how he went to jail. He didn't go to jail because he was out in the streets thugging it. He went into jail trying to provide for his family. And the whole time, Vi never told Will the real story, so Will only assumed that his dad was a thug, a mongrel in these streets. After the truth is out, everyone sheds a little tear. Because it's the first time they've been together in over 13, 14 years. Lou, Will, they hug. Lou, Vi, they hug. And all I always say is, conversation rules the nation. Just talk about it. Just bring it up and talk about it. The more you hold it in, the more it's going to hurt. Well, it looks like everyone's getting on the same page. Jeffrey shows up to Roman with a bag full of money that he had hidden. In his boxing bag. He turns it over and says, you owe me, Roman. So send this money over there. They're in shambles. They ain't got no money. Give them this money and leave my family the F alone. And we hear Roman say, well, it was good seeing you, Jeffrey. Because this money, he's going to make it work. Because he does owe Jeffrey for everything that he did before he left the country. And the last thing we see is Will and Lou on that basketball court. And you hear Lou say, I'm proud of you, boy, before Will gets out there and starts dropping them off. I'm talking about cross, cross, behind the back, tween, tween, belay, wait, whoa, step back three. Oh, I've never seen that move. But Will and Lou, they're at least open to having conversation. And that's all you can ask for between the father and the son. All right, there you go to recap for episode six of Bel Air. Let me know what you're thinking about the series so far. And I'm glad to see Will and Lou back on the same page, even though Vi said maybe every two years we can have a big sit down like this. Also, what did you think about Frederick and Jeffrey? Was that a good way to end the story as far as Jeffrey being under attack from whoever it was in the UK? Let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, Road to 50,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'm out.